Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, we are here for the Santa Monica Democratic Club Rent Control Board debate. And I personally have made an endorsement in this race, so I'm going to be uh, recusing myself and our membership vice president, Michael Soloff, will be leading this part of the discussion. So I'm gonna turn it over to Michael. Thanks, John. So as everybody I hope knows, we have two four-year seats that are up for election this cycle. Uh, we have two Democrats who have asked this club for endorsement, Anastasia Foster and Carol Lynch Rosas, and they're both here tonight and will answer some questions that have come either from members or from the board. So Carolyn and Anastasia, um, oh, and uh, Peter, if you're doing the timing, answers are gonna be one minute apiece. I see his, his outer world there. I'm not sure he's there. Um, I'll get ready to time just in case. In any event, i um, like to begin by asking each of you to just introduce who you are and why you are running for the Rent Control Board. You each get one minute, so whoever would like to go first. I, I can go. Oh, Anastasia, did you want to go? You go right ahead. Okay. Hi, good, good evening, Democrats. Um, thank you so much for having me here tonight. My name is Carolyn Tarosis. I'm an incumbent rent control board commissioner, um, also serving as the director of economic and business development for the county of LA. Um, and I'm proud to be running with Anastasia Foster together for the two seats uh, available this term. Uh, I'm really proud of the work that we've done. I tell everyone that being able to serve on the rent control board has been the honor and the privilege of my life. It is so fun at the same time rewarding. Um, we have much work to do to ensure equity in our housing availability, uh, to ensure affordable, safe housing for our residents of this city. Um, I'm proud of the work that I've already done to eliminate unfair pass-through fees uh, to tenants and housing, uh, to ensure that we are consistently capping uh, rents that have been inflated by Costa Hawkins and working with both our landlord and tenant community to ensure that we have a transparent uh, and open process when people come to our rent control board. Um, I would be honored to serve another term uh, and I'm uh, proud to be here. Thank with you, you, time. Uh, hi, good evening Democrats. I'm Anastasia Foster. Um, I'm the mom of a kindergartner. I'm the owner of a very tiny business. I'm a renter and I've even been a landlord uh, in the past. I got involved with rent control, as most of you know, because of my work with Meals on Wheels. Um, I, I witnessed some absolutely harrowing conditions in the apartments of some of our clients, uh, many of whom I considered friends and it affected me deeply. Um, I started advocating for them uh, with their landlords and property managers and sometimes was able to work it out and other times I was quite shocked at some of the responses and, and behavior I, I saw. And it got me involved in, in advocacy work for them. And then that led me to Santa Monica's for renters rights, where I learned more and more and more about the charter, worked on the renters uh, tenant hotline. And here I am an incumbent rent board commissioner. And like Carolyn said, uh, we're so happy to be running together again for our second uh, term. Thank you. So as you've both indicated, you are incumbents. So would you each take a minute to tell us what you believe you've been able to accomplish in your first term on the rent control board? Sure. Um, so I've worked locally and so has Carolyn, locally and regionally and up and down the state on housing policy. I think it's a real bonus when, when um, you can tell your constituents in the city of Santa Monica that not only you know, are we working really hard for them, but that we're actually Santa Monica is not a bubble. We're in the middle of Los Angeles. We're the terminus of Wilshire Boulevard and housing policy that affects them affects us. Um, uh, it, uh, we've done more than our duty of just attending our monthly meetings. We've made ourselves available to resources all over this region and this state. Um, like Carolyn said, we work to refine the construction related decrease petition process. Um, we worked and contributed to the ban on furnished corporate rentals in order to preserve our housing stock uh, and, and so much more. And uh, I'll let Carolyn tell more. Sure. So additionally, I think I'm really proud of the fact that we've expanded relocation benefits for tenants in owner-occupied properties, making sure that that's fair um, based on cost of living and the market. 
um, Anastasia said that we work very high, hard to ensure that units, rent controlled units can only be rent, rented to natural persons and of course lobbied council for what we believe are the strongest renter protections uh, against corporate rentals and furnished units. Um, we've actually worked very hard with our Sacramento lobbyists as well. We, we have a Sacramento lobbyist to make amendments to the state's Ellis Act um, to protect tenants who have been evicted um, in terms of the right of return. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, we're, we've always voted to cap pass-throughs. Uh, we worked to um, cap the pass-throughs from um, voter indebtedness uh, from property owners. And we've also um, increased the transparency and accountability of our agency with the um, probably largest IT project in the, in the agency's history. Thank you. Uh, to the 21st century, thanks. So some of our, our local landlords have expressed their view that uh, unlike under the current system, they believe tenants should have to pay additional sums above their base rent for water, sewage, and trash, uh, even in the absence of individual metering. And these landlords have suggested that they should be able to charge these additional sums to cover the utilities for the building as a whole using the so-called ratio utility building system, a system that allocates the general building charges to individual tenants based on a metric such as number of bedrooms or something like that in their apartment. Would you each take a minute to explain why you either do or don't favor uh, such a change in uh, current regulations? Well, Mike, I'll go ahead and start in Ephesian. You can kind of fill it in. We've actually, this is already settled law, uh, actually, so I, I don't necessarily need to opine on this. It is settled that that is not, um, you know, required. The Rubs lawsuit settled this matter. Um, additionally, landlords are free to install their own um, individual metering, water metering in their buildings. Um, and so we will continue to adhere to the current um, settled law. Um, and Car Carolyn's absolutely right. Um, there was a lawsuit over this and it was settled. Uh, settled we won. Uh, the, the board won outright in court. The city won outright in court. So um, that is settled science. Um, what I would say, though, is that the, the CPI-based increase that the voters passed in 2010, Measure GA, um, takes care of it. Uh, there's in two ways. Landlords are able to bring their, their vacancies up to market rents, as we all know, which are now setting records across the nation as the most expensive vacant apartments in the country. And that probably makes up for utility increases. Uh, and 70% of our rent controlled stock have experienced these market rate vacancies and, and most have had multiple turnovers every three to five years since then. So. We do feel that the annual increase, um, some landlords in some communities when the economic conditions turn down don't get any increase, um, mm -hmm. but our landlords always do. And so we do feel that Fine. it's fair this time. Thank you. Um, some of our local landlords have also expressed their view um, that the process for seeking a rent increase to cover the costs of repairs and renovations ought to be reviewed so as to shorten the t processing times and shorten the amortization periods. Can you take a minute to explain why you do or don't favor such changes to the uh, uh, the rent increase petition process? Sure. I'm sorry, can, can you repeat the part about the what their desire is for amortization? Uh, I think it's to shorten the processing times and to uh, uh, shorten the period over which the costs are amortized. For the rent increase petition? That's the question that I received. So, oh, sorry, the reason I hesitate. I understand it. So, um, and it's probably due to 21 years of Costa Hawkins and vacancy decontrol in this city. We have had fewer than, than you can count on one hand in eight, nine years of any rent increase petitions based on lack of a fair return in the city of Santa Monica. Often when we've been uh, written letters or asked in public comment, um, about things like that, we we absolutely recommend that they avail themselves of the process if they feel that uh, there are so many tenants in their building that are um, on historically affordable rents that they can't make ends meet. We've invited them openly to come uh, and and file those petitions. And I would just add that you know again we have seen very very few landlords file for rent increase petitions. I understand that the question is related to um, our process. 
I'm absolutely happy to take any suggestions that people have to the process um, and have that transparent discussion. I've always made myself available to our landlord community and I'm happy to do that. Um, but again, like until we see some sort of parity between the number of tenant harassment complaints that we're getting at our city attorney's office and uh, the number of you know rent increase petitions being granted, I just don't feel that we're seeing um, a need because like Anastasia stated, uh, before Costa Hawkins passed, we were seeing rent increases of about, you know, one to 2% annually. And now we're seeing, um, you know, the cost of living increase in our city by about 9% per year uh, for our rental rates as, as units turn over. So it's just, we are setting units at market rate um, and, and, and it's what the market will bear. So I think Anastasia is absolutely oh, yeah. We haven't seen yeah. the need for these petitions. So uh, this is a perfect segue because some of our local tenants have expressed their view that when faced with tenant harassment or code violations, that they're forced to shoulder the enforcement burden largely on their own. Um, and while these are enforcement issues for the city attorney's office, can you take each take a minute to explain what, if anything, you think could be done by the rent control board in partnership with the city to further enforcement efforts? Sure. Um, so I'll just say that, you know, Anastasia and I championed um, a streamlined construction decrease process for tenants, first of all, um, because the first thing I noticed when I got on the board, and Sue Himmelrich can attest to this, is that I didn't feel that there was good coordination between the rent control agency, code enforcement, and building and safety. And yes, we have this neighborhood preservation coordinator, and sorry to get wonky, but I just feel that we could be much more streamlined. So first, there's a requirement, you know, when construction is happening now, that the means and methods plan for tenant relocation is, is in um, the building and safety permit process and incorporated into any approvals. However, we have a problem when landlords come in and skirt that process and start doing massive construction around tenants and their units. Um, and so I, I do feel that the rent agency, if the rent agency was delegated any sort of authority from city council, uh, to work more closely with building and safety and code enforcement, I would welcome that. I think landlords would probably welcome that and tenants would welcome Thank that. Thank you, time. No one wants to have to go from agency to agency, and, and I understand that concern from our tenant community, of course. Um, Carolyn pretty much said it all. I absolutely agree 100% with every word she just said. And also, I would add, um, we've tried, you know, we're very professional and diplomatic, and we go, you know, we like to go through proper channels, but we'd like to see. Um, a triage of maybe how the city attorney's office consumer division uh, triages these calls from tenants because all we know is what we hear over and over and over in, in, a, in a very high volume that makes me think it, it must be somewhat accurate that more often than not tenants who do call are told they that their case doesn't meet the threshold mm -hmm. and that could be a question of resources uh, priorities um, and I completely understand that, that there needs to be a, a demonstrated need and a, and a um, tangible evidence that so that, you know, perhaps the city manager and city council can speak with the city attorney about prioritizing um, a roof over people's head is really, really important. So um, we are Thank absolutely you. ready Fine. to cooperate. And briefly, as a follow up to that, um, I think um, maybe Ted Winter or others have raised the issue of possibly subpoena power for the RCB as a way of helping this. And one of our tenant members wanted to ask you what you thought about that. Should there be some additional subpoena power for the uh, rent control yeah. board that, that could be helpful here? So of course we'd be willing to help. I think it's really helpful when an agency that has total laser focus on one issue and one issue only and doesn't have to be everything to everybody in the city that that the city should avail itself of our resources and our expertise and our our mm -hmm. investigators expertise now um, we're uniquely funded we are not funded with taxpayer dollars so there would have to be uh, an equitable arrangement between our agencies to where um that is not uh disrupted thank you uh, time i believe i believe these are 30 second questions aren't they uh, yeah, okay. as a follow-up. Yeah, okay. Oh, right. okay. Um, so you can see another 30 seconds, Carol. 
Yeah, I'll just yeah. say, and I, I actually think that this gets a little bit to the issue of equity because we're talking about tenants making complaints and um, not being taken seriously. And I, I would like to touch on that in my potentially in a follow-up question, but for subpoena power, it would have to be very narrowly tailored, very specific. We definitely don't want to go down this law and order enforcement um, you know, route. I think it would only be if we were there in the place of the city attorney or city council. We do have a hearings department and a legal department um, and an you. investigator to, right. to carry out those duties. So let's turn to Prop 21. Um, both of you have endorsed Prop 21. Would you explain why? Why? Is that what you said? Why you've endorsed yes. it? Yes, sure. So I am a very strong proponent of Proposition 21, the Rental Affordability Act. Um, I do believe that we need to replace, repeal and replace Costa Hawkins. Um, like I said, we've had runaway rent increases every single year since Costa Hawkins passed in uh, 1995 and then was enacted in 1999. Um, and this would allow local governments to not force them to enact rent control, but a local control measure to allow local governments to enact rent control on housing that was first occupied 15 years ago. So we would have the ability to subject additional units in our community to rent control, which I think is um, you know, something I'm very interested in exploring. Uh, and it would still prohibit rent control from violating the landlord's right to a fair financial return. So I think that's a really important point. Um, that's still absolutely there. Um, I've been a strong supporter. I was a strong supporter of Proposition 10, um, and I'm a strong supporter of Proposition 21. Um, and I think that after you know, 20 years of vacancy decontrol in Santa Monica, only 24 percent of our units are still Thank you. long term renters and we want to try to keep long term renters in our community. Thanks. So I'll just expand on what she said. You've already stated that I am a, a, a verdant supporter of, of Prop 21 as I was for Prop 10. Um, again, what she said, every community can tailor this to what's right for them. If there is some community in the middle of California that doesn't need rent control and that doesn't feel the need and doesn't have a lack of affordability, then fine, so be it. They, it's an, just another day in that town. But if you're in a place where rampant and runaway uh, market pressures are motivating you know, some owners of, and some groups to aggressively pursue buyouts and aggressively pursue construction around people's heads, um, and we've had 21 years of Costa Hawkins. You know, every 20 years or so, it's okay to reevaluate where we are. Uh, Costa Hawkins, that was the rationale they used in Sacramento. They're like, oh, we've had 15 years of strict rent control. Enough is enough. And they convinced enough people in Sacramento it was time for an adjustment. Well, after 21 years of Costa Hawkins, I think it's time for an adjustment back in the other direction. It has been opined upon by, oh, so um, if Proposition 21 were to pass, okay. um, would you work to restore a limit in Santa Monica on rental increases when the old tenant leaves and a new tenant moves in, so-called vacancy control? And if you would, what, what do you think you would be working towards having that look like? Thanks, that's exactly where I was going. So um, in 2018, with the prospect of Prop 10 on the ballot, council op opined on this and city attorney also and the rent board took a few you know, swipes at it in public session ourselves. And the city attorney opined that, that it would fall to the rent board uh, and, and agency to decide an interim ordinance that would last until the next general election. So for two years, it would be the rent board that decides um, what we do. And the kinds Thank of things that time. made this, mm. Carolyn, you tell them what made sense to us at that time. There were a couple yeah. ideas. Sure. I think that um, sure. you know, we, we have to, establish, first of all, I, I generally speaking think that we want to keep uh, Santa Monica affordable and diverse, right? And so in order to achieve that, we have to cap these runaway rent increases. And so I would be very interested in looking at the economic impact of restoring vacancy control, potentially on a going forward basis. I would not want to do anything that would destroy um, anyone's right to a fair return, of course. Um, but I think that, you know, we, we looked at some hybrid approaches uh, and some potential going forward approaches, and we would have to do another study. We were doing some study sessions and look at the Thank impact you. to our tenants and landlords. So um, with the time we have remaining, which is probably about a minute each, um, why don't you tell us anything else you want to tell us and, and 
in particular, anything you want to tell us you want to accomplish in the next four years? Sure. I guess I'll go first. Um, so I would just like to say that I think the, the rent control board and especially the housing equity issues right now is the pivotal you know, issue of our generation. Um, I, I also just want to say in my work um, for the county, we work very closely um, to figure out how we really make investments in underinvested communities. And we know that people of color have been particularly harmed by housing instability. Um, half of all renters in our country are people of color and they are disproportionately affected by cost burden. So I think that making sure that we're making Santa Monica accessible, Monica accessible to a diversity of um, you know, all people, also socioeconomic statuses, very important to me. And in my next term on the board, I really would like to improve tenant protections in the wake of COVID-19 and specifically look at this with an equity lens um, and how you know, our city is taking seriously some of these concerns around tenant harassment, like we mentioned earlier. Um, and I think that you know, I would like to be able to make changes. Thank you, uh, time. Control should Prop 21 pass. Um, and I'm committed to never taking a dollar from the developer or real estate lobby. Thank you, time. Anastasia, last words. Yeah, I, I have so enjoyed becoming a public servant. Um, you know, I was just another citizen and found my way to this really organically and Crafting policy and going above and beyond the call of what our office uh, requires of us has been a gift. It's been enriching and so much fun. I love corresponding with tenants and landlords. And um, uh, I said in, a, in another panel that uh, I answer landlords' emails all the time, and sometimes they're surprised. They're like, oh, I thought you hated us. And I'm like, no, of course not. And so being a bridge for the public to help them understand uh, how government works when it's going right, when it's going wrong, and bringing a human voice to that process that makes people feel connected to the laws that affect their lives. I think that's been the, the best part of this for me. And uh, in, in our last term, that's, we'll do more of the same. Thank you, we'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Great, thank you both so much for participating. And uh, I also wanna thank uh, Ed Hunsacker, who was going to, uh, moderate this forum, but uh, wasn't able to be with us tonight for some personal reasons. So um, I want to thank him for his work and preparation as well. And John, we'll kick it back to you for the next part of the meeting. Thank you all. Thank you.